Today's video is about unstable nuclei and is based on the 2015 AQA AS level specification. And we're going to kick things off with the strong nuclear force. Now, <laughs> this is quite a complicated concept, so probably the best way to explain this is to have the diagram, this very, very helpful diagram up, whilst I explain it. Uh, feel free to pause and just sort of take it in both before and after I explain it. I think that would be the best way to do it. Um, so, I mean, as we know, the electrostatic force exists in the nucleus, but if this was the only force, the nucleons would just start flying apart. So we know there must be a force that exists in the nucleus that is stronger than the electrostatic force. This is the strong nuclear force, or the strong interaction. Experiments have shown that the force, in fact, has a very short range of approximately 0.5 to 3 femtometers. It's also been shown that the force works equally between all nucleons, meaning the size of the force is the same between protons and protons, neutrons and neutrons, or protons and neutrons. So as you can see, the strong nuclear force is repulsive uh, for very, very small separations of nucleons. That is what's sort of like stopping them from just colliding and, you know, collapsing into each other. And then as the separation increases past 0.5 femtometers, uh, the force becomes attractive, which sort of holds them together, stops them from flying apart, and reaches a maximum attract, attract, attractive value? Attraction value, I think that should be. And then it just falls rapidly towards zero after about three femtometers. Um, the electrostatic uh, repulsion always exists. Um, it is completely indefinite. Uh, it's very high um, when the uh, strong nuclear force is very high, and then it's very low when the strong nuclear force is also low. Um, one way to remember the range, <laughs> this is this is how my physics te teacher taught me it, is um, you're, pretend you're in a bar, right? You've, you've had a few drinks, it's pretty dark, and uh, you're about three meters away from this girl. And uh, you're just like, oh, all right, she, she looks pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, the closer you get to her, uh, the more you're sort of excitation of the idea of being with this girl builds, so your traction is building. Once you get to about 0.5 meters, or femtometers in this case, you're just like, oh, yeah, you looked a lot better from the other side of the room, and you are completely repulsed. So, the strong nuclear force kicks into repulsion. That is the way I remember it. <laughs> um, next thing is uh, alpha emission. Uh, this only happens in massive nuclei, so like uh, uranium and radium, and this is because they have too many protons. Uh, the nuclei of these atoms are just too huge for the strong force to keep them stable. An alpha particle is basically just a helium nuclei, it has um, four nucleons, two protons, so two protons and two neutrons. Uh, and when a alpha particle is emitted, the proton number decreases by two, and the nucleon number decreases by four. So as you can see, and it has a really, really, really short range. So as you can see in this example, uh, uranium uh, has a nuclear number of 238 and a proton number of 92, then loses two protons and becomes a completely new element, which has a nucleon number of 234, and then we also have our alpha particle, which, as I said before, is basically just a helium nuclei. Next thing is beta minus emission. GCSE, you might have heard of, be well, will have gone through beta emission, but... There is beta minus and there is beta plus. But right now we're going to talk about beta minus. Um, basically, it happens in neutron-rich isotopes. So unlike the uh, unlike alpha emission, instead of too many protons, this is too many neutrons. Um, a beta particle is basically just an electron. <laughs> basically, it's the emission of an electron from the nucleus along with an electron antineutrino. <laughs> yes, a bit of a mouth mouthful, but give me a minute which is released in order to conserve energy and momentum. When a nucleus ejects a beta particle, one of the neutrons in the nucleus is changed into a proton. And so the proton number as a result increases by one and the nucleon number stays the same. Uh, beta particles also have a much, 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 much larger range than alpha particles. And here's an example. We have an element of a proton number of 75 and a nucleon number of 187 one of the neutrons turns into a proton, and this results in the proton number increasing by one. The nucleon number stays the same because the proton turning into a nu neutron doesn't change the nucleon number because they're both nucleons. And of course we have our beta particle, aka an electron, and an electron antineutrino. 
History of the neutrino. <laughs> Nice little story. So scientists originally thought that beta decay only emitted an electron, but they were wrong. Observations showed that the energy of particles after the beta decay was less than it was before, which didn't fit in with the principle of conservation of energy. Every um, interaction must conserve energy. A lad named Wolfgang Pauli, look how hard he looks, you would not want to mess with him. You really wouldn't. So, in 1930, he hypothesized that there was, in fact, another particle being emitted, which was carrying away some of the missing energy and momentum, and that this particle was obviously neutral in order to, order to satisfy conservation of charge laws, because charge also has to be conserved in every single interaction. Other discoveries in the future then led to Pauli's uh, theory becoming accepted, and the particle was classed as a neutrino, and was eventually actually observed 25 years later. So, although the neutrino was not seen for 25 years, People didn't really want to disagree with this guy. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this video. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, antiparticles in the next video, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, if you learned from this video, then I would appreciate a like, comment, and of course subscribe so that you stay in tune for future videos. Have a fantastically brilliant day, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.